Okay, so we're going to be doing something a little bit different today because I'm at home and we're going to go into the courtyard that we have. It's a bit of a community project and I've got a bunch of plants to plant out for everybody. So as a lot of you know, I live in a flat and in the start of lockdown 2020, we actually had a bit of a, an idea to spruce up our sort of courtyard area. There's about 12 flats that are currently overlooking where I'm sitting. And I'll turn you around in just a second, um, but it's not much of a garden, but it is shared by all of us here. And although not everybody uses it, some of us do, and it's a great place to sort of catch up and have a barbecue in the summertime. And at the start of lockdown, you know, a lot of people weren't working, so we put a lot of fruit and veggies in and made a bit of a sort of community sort of garden. Um, but obviously everyone's back at work now. Some people don't have as much time on their hands and we've got some families here as well that have quite young children. So people don't have as much time to, you know, to do it anymore, maintain it. So I thought, you know, I can at least get some crops in the ground that are really low maintenance, that are great for this sort of environment that we can all still use that don't need too much upkeep, um, such as herbs and salads. So I'm gonna get them in the ground and at a later date, um, I've got some spare flowers to add as well, just so that we can still, you know, make use of the space and get some crops from it. So um, yeah, I, that's what I'll be doing today. So this is how the space actually looks. We've got this great big Himalayan birch there in the middle, which is absolutely gorgeous tree. Uh, we've got a very skinny border over there, which gets a lot of shade. There's a very busy main road. And we've got three raised beds. One, two, three. This one's covered in nettles at the moment, which we need to get out. But that is a strawberry bed. And then we've got a bit of a, another border there. In previous years we did actually climb a few bits at the back and then there's a bit of a patio up there which gets the most sun which is where we do a lot of barbecuing and things in the summertime so the plan today is just to put in a few more salad crops tidy up this raised bed and i'm going to put some herbs in the back there as you can probably see we don't have much ground here it's all quite gravelly and yeah, there's no soil really to plant directly into, um, although we do have a lot of self-seeded wildflowers and the strawberries are also starting to scramble. Um, but yeah, as for the salads, I've just got a mix that I've brought from the allotment. This is um, from a mixed packet of organic seeds. So I've got a mix of greens and red ones as well. These raised beds are actually made out of pallet collars, which is something that builders merchants get a lot of their materials sort of delivered in. You can stack them up and create a raised bed with them very cheaply um, to a height that you want. And um, I did manage to pick them up for free just by scrounging and asking around. Um, but the soil in this isn't the best quality anymore. The nutrients are a little bit depleted and we did do it on a bit of a budget to start with. So um, I will actually be top dressing this when I bring some compost back here with me, um, just to give it a little boost of nutrients and to help retain a bit more of that moisture because it is obviously sat on gravel essentially. So it doesn't um, have much access to the water table below. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to stick with mostly salads in here because it is quite a shaded area, they, um, they will grow quite well in shade and obviously don't, don't need much in the way of maintenance. And also I was finding that when I was growing the lettuce on the allotment, I wasn't really harvesting it when I needed it. And then when I realized I needed some, you know, it's a, it's a very short drive to the allotment, but it wasn't worth going out for. So I just find that if I can grow it myself here at home, then I'm more likely to make use of it and eat it fresher. 
but obviously everybody is welcome to harvest if they need it so um yeah i don't know where everybody is today probably at work i tend to plant my salads about six inches apart and that way they'll fill out nicely and um I've got a mix of greens and reds, which means it's going to look quite pretty as well. Obviously, with it being on a lot of gravel around here, I'm hopeful that we shouldn't get too many slugs because they don't really like to slug along gravel. This box was actually uh, Rob and Beth's before they decided not to use it this year. so. Uh, I think last year he grew a mix of everything, including potatoes and onions and things. So there were quite a few strays in here. <laughs> but yeah, we did manage to get quite a good harvest considering, you know, a lack of sort of space really. Even managed a pumpkin in a pot. The only pests that I am aware of that we get around here are squirrels. And there's also um, a resident cat in one of the houses further down. So I'm hoping he doesn't want to use these big boxes as his uh, litter tray. And the squirrel, well, he might get some of the strawberries, but you know what, we don't mind. <laughs> I do really love this Himalayan birch that we've got here. I take quite a lot of pleasure in peeling off the bark to bring out that white trunk. It's, um, it's quite a beautiful big tree. Now in this box here, um, I'm actually going to add some coriander because I think it's going to quite like growing in here. I've got some great roots on these plants. I've already got two. Uh, I'm going to add another one or two. <laughs> I'm quite looking forward to having lots of homemade salsas this year, especially if my, my chili peppers do quite well. And yeah, we do a lot of cooking with coriander, love a nice curry. Um, so yeah, I'm sure everybody else will appreciate this as well. Now this bed is the strawberry bed, but it's got a lot of nettles in here. And uh, we don't want to be picking in between nettles. So uh, yeah, definitely want the gloves on for this one. Um, especially one of the neighbours, Nathan, he's got a little boy who's at that age now where I bet he'll just love picking some of these fresh strawberries. So let's, let's make sure it's um, child friendly. Well, now that the bed is all cleaned up and mostly weeded, um, I'm going to put in some herbs because the soil there is quite dry and free draining and it's the sunniest spot. So I've got some compact oregano or oregano if you're American. I've also got some rosemary. Uh, this mint I found in my local hardware shop and it's called strawberry mint. And I hadn't actually tried it before, but it does actually taste quite a bit like strawberries. So I think it's going to be great for cocktails or ice cream. Mm, it smells gorgeous too. I've also got some sage and some thyme and some lemon thyme as well, which I like using for cooking things like um, baking cakes. Not that I'm a very good baker, but I love a lemon drizzle and the lemon thyme sprinkled on the top of that or inside the cake is delicious and also the flowers are really pretty for decorating too so I'm just gonna dot these along and um, yeah plant them. Oregano is one of my absolute favorite herbs so I'm gonna put that right there which is the easiest spot for me to grab it when I'm cooking. I'm gonna make sure I plant these times separately so that um, everybody knows that they're different and we don't want to mix the lemon and the non lemony thyme together otherwise that could call for some interesting flavours in your cooking. Rosemary, I'm going to pop rosemary there in the middle 
actually the rosemary is going to get quite tall and that might be nice as a a bit of an anchor on the edge there so i'm going to put that there and uh, oregano won't get too tall but it'll get nice and bushy as will the sage which could be nice in the middle as well then we've got the other thyme and as for the mint if you don't already know mint spreads very quickly and it's quite difficult to get rid of your garden if you plant it in the ground so this one's definitely going into a pot yeah it's mostly sort of topsoil in here so it is quite sandy and free draining which is perfect for herbs they don't want damp soggy soils most of these herbs are quite mediterranean in their origin so you gotta think of that as their favored growing conditions good roots on there just sprinkle them out a little bit encourage it to get growing this tub here is what we grew some carrots in one year wasn't very successful if I'm honest but I've decided that this will be a great pot for the mint to grow in because it's big enough that it shouldn't dry out too quickly because um, obviously we're not going to be watering it too much. We don't have an outside tap here um, and we don't even have a water butt connected to the, um, the guttering yet. Something my landlord is a bit slow on the mark to get sorted. A little tip if you didn't already know, uh, don't plant your mints together in the same pot because it can mingle the flavours and you might not know one from the other eventually and you just want to keep the flavours true to what they are. So that's this area now all planted up. I've got a few more bits to add at a later date. And um, now I just need to top dress some of those boxes with some more compost. And it needs watering in, although it is about to rain. And I'm gonna hope that we have a good downpour because watering out here is a lot of effort. It involves me going up two flights of stairs with a watering can and back down again and outside. So. Um, yeah i'm gonna hope and cross my fingers that it's about to rain if not i will be given a good drench with the watering can immediately um so yeah just thought i'd show you what i'm up to in the courtyard so that you guys know what i'm on about if i ever refer to it in future um yeah thanks for watching and i'll see you soon